Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I'm live streaming a painting of a watercolor from a photograph and I will upload it to YouTube at a later date. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just remember that this was live streamed and if I start like talking to other people, it's because people are coming into the live chat. Um, as per usual, you know, if you have any questions, comments, let me know down below. And um, yeah, let's get started. So I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua here, 140 pound um, cold press, 100% cotton. I'm going to do an overall saturation with water. And I'm working from a photo from pexels.com. So it's a free photo site. And um, this is from a gentleman from Kurdistan. Uh, Naswan Gaherzi, I believe is the pronunciation. So this is from a photo that he uploaded to be used on uh, Pexels. I do feel like this one may be something that I'm biting off more than I can chew because it has, um, it features very prominently a uh, stream with some white water down the middle of it. But um, we'll play around and see what, what I can do. So I like to saturate the paper nice and wet. And as I use colors, I'll let you know if you plan on following along. Or, you know, some people have been telling me they just kind of enjoy watching, so I really appreciate that. I like to use these shop rags to kind of wipe off the middle of the palette. thinking that I might actually leave the very white of the sky right here. There's going to be white of the water rapids. In the photo it's dead center, but I think I may have to shift some elements over a little bit. Maybe I'll move the, the water rapid right here, and then it'll come close. Maybe I'll move it down to this corner. I'm kind of just doing a little bit of adjustment with um, that. And you know it's gonna be a fast and loose painting, even if it takes you know about an hour. So I'm not really sketching anything out. Just look at it from that standpoint coming out. In fact, I'll grab a little bit of raw sienna to help me map out that line. This will come right about here. And it'll come here. give me that whole front face and there comes in so both sides come in here comes out and then the white rapid water will be between in fact let me try to grab a clean spot of this towel and even wipe back where I'm going to let that rapid water be. And then we get a few white spots here and here. I think that'll help. Even pull out a little bit of white there. Okay, in the very far, far distance between the trees, there's, um, looks like a mountainside of rocks. So I'm going to take a light mix of light red oxide and ultramarine. This is my go-to far distant color combination. What works for you may differ. Um, I remember reading in one artist's 
book, you know, saying that, you know, he'd be given the recipe for, I don't know, let's say that a bark color. And you know, let's say it was burnt umber and ultramarine. And, you know, immediately his question was, how much of the burnt umber, you know, what percent ultramarine, what brand, what water concentration. So even though I'm just saying light red oxide and ultramarine, keep in mind that, you know, your variations might differ. So kind of just um, play around with that. Okay, so this is a far distant object. Uh, I'm gonna feed in just a little bit of variety in it. I don't want ultramarine like that. We're gonna have trees and stuff overlap this. Then as it gets closer, there's a background that is kind of that muted raw sienna that you get when mixed with ultramarine. So I'm gonna grab some of that ultramarine and raw sienna. And it comes down here. That that was a cat. <laughs> that was a cat making that noise. I swear. <laughs> this is the top of the rapid in the far distance. It has a yellowish tint to it, so I'm going to try to grab a little lemon yellow in there. And it goes a little orangey, so mix a little light red oxide into it. This is far distant. Now within it, there's a lot of um, trunks and twigs and things like that that you'll never wind up seeing. However, I'm going to take the number one rigor. I'm gonna mix a slight dark. I don't want it to be too watery because I'll get kind of cauliflower effects. And I'm just gonna do a little texture stroke in there just for like the bare hint of that, maybe one or two of these showing through at the end. So I'm going to have a whole bunch of um, trees and trunks in front, and this is just to create a very slight illusion. And plus, when I work from back to front, I like to um, kind of build up the image in my mind and make up the whole thing, even though this is from a photograph. even grab a little bit of a reddish tinge so a little bit of red light red oxide for a little bit of variety in there okay makes a little bit of green I know I mentioned this spot before. I just kind of want to get that in there. Let's see through a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to this ridge that will come across. Come down here. We're starting to um, dry, so I'm just going to spritz down here just to wet the paper a little bit. I finally found another one of my spritzer bottles. I was about to order some off Amazon. But I kind of want to um, save the orders for 
maybe trying a different type of brush. Um, I've been thinking about getting maybe an oval brush or a cat's tongue brush. So we'll see. Anyway, so now this is more earth tone mixture of foliage and leaves. And it's darker, so it kind of jumps forward. So I'm taking burnt sienna and ultramarine. to put that ridge line in and it comes here so there's gonna be a tree that comes out of it in this location I'm just stretching this spot right here I'm stretching this spot right there and it comes to the rapid I have to make it smaller than I'm thinking so that it has that depth perspective to it. And I'll have that come here. Right there. So that's a mixture of the burnt sienna and the ultramarine. And I'm gonna feed some colors in this wet and wet and this texture. This is uh, raw sienna being fed in. I'll even feed in some light red oxide. Um, the light red oxide is brighter than it is in the picture, but I think it'll give it a nice overall feel. I don't really want to leave any whites of the paper here. I'm going to come over to this other side. So the ridge line comes over. You see the other side here. Now this is going to be closer to us. This is the white of the rapid. I have to bring some reflections down. The reflections are darker than it is, but I'm, I'll come back in, in a moment. Here's this edge, so it comes out comes here and it comes out. I think that'll be interesting. I grab some burnt umber. I think um, a yellow ochre would have been nice in this. So one thing we have a ridge that's like close in front of us. And it comes right here, and we have some really close leaves. All right, so what are you climbing in? All right, let me feed uh, some stronger mixes into these spots. Here's a little bit of watery Payne's Gray. Go along this edge. I'm holding off on the water, but I need to kind of get to it. So here's that mix of the Payne's Gray. And Ultramarine. And burnt cyan, uh, burnt umber, kind of a go-to dark for me. Kind of scrub that in right in here. I'm doing like all this wet and wet variety feeding in right now uh, while it's wet, and then we'll do a uh, a dry off, and we'll start playing with. Um, the trees.
This ridge line is pretty dark, so darken that up. Raw sienna. Have a lot of fun variety in there. I was debating leaving that with those whites in there, but I think uh, it'd be best just to leave the white of the water. Okay, now in this far background, we're going to have trees and trunks. Um, as you can tell, it's probably probably able to tell it's dry in this area. It's wet up here for some reason, but it's dry here. So I'm not really gonna get a diffusion. So I need to rely on kind of a little bit more watery mix for these. They are gonna get hidden, but you can kind of see a little bit those marks that we had done originally back there. And this is just to now help us start creating the illusion of depth. Take a little bit more down here. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm gonna have the card. Since this is so close, we're gonna have some scraped grass. And I'm gonna do that now before this area dries. It's not super saturated, so you can get a nice scrape. You can even grab some lemon yellow on this, get some more green in here. And while I have it, let's play around. I know I keep on harping on this ridge line. All right. Um, I think I'm going to stick with the number one rigger a little bit longer. But I think I'm going to switch to the number four soon. Um, there's a prominent tree that's popping out at me. It's back in here. I'm going to put that guy in. I do have to start um, thinking about darkening my mix. Now that I'm coming closer, um, they're going to be more... I guess a better word would be tangible and more uh, believable or, uh, you know, like physically closer and whatnot. Now, I will say that um, I am a little bit of a loss because I'm not putting um, any tops in for these trees, but I'm fully expecting a lot of this stuff to be covered by the foliage once I um, get to the bigger trees that grow from here and here. That they play such a big part in this that um, I think that they're gonna have an effect, quite effect. We have another tree here. I know that kind of goes against what I was saying about like all the thin little tree lines in the background. Now I'm 
using ultramarine and uh, burnt umber. Um, bringing them to the top of the page just because I have a tendency not to do that. So that's, I know one of my flaws. So I want to take care of that now to make sure that doesn't cause any issues later on. Then around a little bit with the model under that edge right there. a little bit I do have a very big prominent tree in this picture it comes right here this is what so I'm gonna put in these reflections and these rapids not really rapids but the fast-moving water kind of shakily putting them in to give it definition and shape. And I'll feed in ultramarine and other colors into this nice soupy mix. I feel like soupy is a good descriptive term for watercolor mixes. This is a number four rigger. That's um, my fiance in the other room. I'm not sure if she has the sinus infection or if this is the COVID coming back. So that's that sucks. Sorry about that. I'm sorry that she's going through that. I haven't really had the cough from COVID. I've been more um, just the breathing issues. I feel like I need to get a dark. For the shadows that these guys would have. And feed in a little bit more dark along this edge. And there's these little trees that come around. Just the kind of little growth. And I'm going to, I haven't cleaned the brush off at all. Some lemon yellow, greenish mix. This upper corner, just to get started with the foliage. We're gonna have to push more fall colors. So I'll let that get us started and then I'll switch over in a moment. Raw Sienna. Now the thing is with this, if the area is dry and you start stippling in, 
you're putting down wet paint so you're now creating areas that are going to start uh, mixing and mingling so you may lose the crispness in some spots so you may need to do dry offs between applications in this fashion so that's just something to uh, be aware of Let me um, get back to a dark, ultramarine, paints gray, burnt umber. I have some big trunks that come off of here. So I'm dealing with uh, drying in multiple spots, so I'm trying to work a little bit rapid. So I apologize if it seems rushed. I'm trying to add a whole bunch of that lotion down there. Grab some light red oxide. That will give us our fall colors. Let me grab some alizarin. That in there as well. Where's my spray bottle? This. When I found this spray bottle, I knew like three years ago when I got those spray bottles. Um, I had to set one up with uh, rubbing alcohol in it to try for uh, textural techniques. And so I found the spray bottles and it had a liquid in it. And due to COVID, I've lost my sense of smell. So it's been gone for a while now. And um, I had to ask my you know, fiance, I was like, is this rubbing alcohol? Can you smell what it is? Regardless, I emptied it out and um, replace it with water, but it's just little things like that. But I couldn't tell what was in a spray bottle. I think it'd be a nice spot to scrape right here for these guys to hide behind. And we'll scrape up. Now, um, there's that drying shift that I see taking place everywhere, meaning things are lightening up in value as they dry. So I'm going to start feeding in uh, darks and trying to preserve some dark spots rather than waiting for the drying to happen and then doing it then.
adding gestural marks. We'll get some raw sienna in for some variety. And Payne's gray. wash among these guys because that always bites me yeah I'm gonna put it underneath the mat I want to make sure it looks nice okay this is pretty coming out pretty cool um, let's see if I could stipple some more foliage in that's I think where I need to start concentrating right now I could scrape textures in but I'm thinking that a dry off is probably going to need to happen for the um, the foliage to really start being layered. First, you smell my feet. We got so many cats, and I love them all. Add to the uh, the close-up foliage marks. Just dapping and scraping and swiping. Let's see. Hands gray. Put that on the side to kind of stop the eye. to darken this guy up a little bit more right here. Let me sit back for a moment and stretch my neck. <sighs> So I think I could play around with the number one rigger up in the growth on top. Um, we could have a little bit more texture to take place here, but I'm not too concerned. The water I'm happy with. 
think what I need to do is see if I can get some nice lemon yellow out. My arch nemesis. Every time I put it out, I glance at it and it turns green. off pulling a lot of that water out look at all crazy I don't want to glob it like I don't want it to be impasto really trying to vary the densities and the clusters. That might be a, another good descriptive word for me to use for that to help uh, differentiate. You know, I'm doing different clusters of uh, that yellow. This is just straight from the tube lemon yellow. So let me put that on the side, grab the number one rigger. We'll play around a little bit more, do it for more gestural marks. And then I think from here, we'll wind up doing a dry off. I think I will take some of these colors and actually stipple in a little bit. Light red oxide. Uh, and of course, with these tutorials, you're more than welcome to follow along. You're more than welcome to sign your own name to anything you paint whenever you're following one of uh, my videos. Um, and you're more than welcome to sell it. You have my express permission. Um, I want you guys to be successful. Art supplies are expensive. And I want you all to be able to afford them. And it feels good um, selling a painting. So I want you all to experience that. Um, if you want to support this channel, I have a whole bunch of links down below. I have um, Venmo and uh, Patreon. Uh, I have exclusive content on there. And, you know, Cash App. Just all these different things if you want to donate. So, thank you. Is it time to call this one? Let's see. We could grab a little bit of um, burnt sienna, stipple that into the sky, uh, into the, the trees for a little bit more variety. Probably could have grabbed some burnt umber too.
So if you're watching and you have headphones on, in a moment I'm going to use the blow dryer just to dry everything off. And we'll see how everything looks. So, you know, watch your ears when that moment comes. All right, and that moment is now. So here's the blow dryer. Thing that I'm seeing that I want to do is kind of thicken this guy up. be good enough for us to see what it looks like so as per usual please like subscribe follow I'll sign it I'll put a mat over it and then I will sign off that just to see what it looks like with a border around it and I'll adjust this for all to see actually I'll take it out there you go all right I hope you all enjoyed and I will talk to you all soon have a great day